welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Today, I decided to do a video that uh, will cover some content that I've probably covered in past videos. You know, here and there, we have uh, looked at a little bit about how to set up the screens when you're going to expose them. So, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you two techniques, I think, two methods, in which we're going to line up your film positives. And it's a demonstrative video where I'm going to explain and demonstrate the process. We won't actually go through the whole process, but I am using a job that you saw me set up on press and print in previous videos. So it's kind of cool in that we're going to use this three color Indian type logo here, this design for a tattoo shop that we actually did a video about how to set it up on press and we did a video where there was a production run where you watched me print the job. Okay, so today I'm going to demonstrate how I might put these film positives on your emulsion coated screens so that, you know, on my emulsion coated screens, right? <laughs> so that I could expose them in the exposure unit and wash them out and get the screens that we use to actually do this job, right? Okay, I have them here. We have three screens. Okay, because as you know, in screen printing, for every color you print, you need a screen. So for this job, we have three film positives. One, two, and three. Each of these film positives represents a different color of ink that we're gonna print, right? Okay, so we need three screens. So that means, of course, you're gonna have to prep and coat three screens and have them ready to expose, okay? so. We're going to show you two different methods. You're really not going to need much here. You don't really need to buy anything to do this. One of the methods is a little bit more clumsy and slow. The other method is a little bit faster, but maybe um, not as precise because, you know, it's a little, little marking technique. But you don't need to buy anything special to do any of these. You could use a, a black Sharpie marker, a ruler. You know, it's always good to have a pencil and paper handy, stuff like that. Please remember that Catspit Production sells screen printing equipment supplies at catspitscreenprintsupply.com. There you will find all of the products that I recommend, products that I've tested, products that I use, like the Ranar equipment that I use in all the videos, a lot of the chemicals, all the squeegees, all this kind of stuff that you'll find and see me using in the shop. A lot of that stuff I'm offering on catspitscreenprintsupply.com. I only offer products that I recommend test and approve, and uh, that's it. So it's a, it's a limited venue, but I'm adding new products all the time. So stay tuned for new products as we expand and offer more as we go on. And of course, I need your support in any way. So if you don't need screen printing equipment or supplies, then you can support me and help me keep making these videos by rating thumbs up, leaving comments, and most importantly, please subscribe. I really appreciate that. So if you can, subscribe today, right now. Do it, do it. Are you ready for this ghetto style technique? And you know, this is the technique I use a lot because I don't, I don't do a ton of multicolor jobs. So um, I do this over here. My drying, screen drying rack is over there. So I can, you know, work over here on the light table. It's pretty cool. And the second method that I'm going to show you, you're going to use the exposure unit because I don't have a light box or a proofing box, so or a proofing table or whatever you want to call it. So we've got this screen here today, and don't laugh, it's jacked up. Whoever cleaned these, I had somebody clean. Uh, they didn't take tape marks or the tape off of the registration marks, so it's a little jacked up today. But don't worry about that. So. What we're going to do here, okay, what I have is a little piece of scratch paper here, and you can see what I've drawn on here. Okay, I've got these little things, and I just did this so you could see what we're doing today. We're actually going to take a measurement down here and a measurement here. This measurement and this measurement will be the same. This measurement here, we don't need to worry about at all. Okay, so we're going to take two measurements and use those measurements in one, two, three places. Okay, this is the piece of paper I'm going to write down my numbers on. Alright, now this screen was already burned, but what I would have done is taken this film positive and I'm going to put it, I would center it in the screen. 
Okay, we're going to line it up to what's already on here today for demonstrative purposes. All right, and so basically with the first one, you can center it and you're going to take a couple of measurements and the best way to take your measurements is try to make them even, of course, right? So you can see over here what I'm doing. Let me try to get, hold on a second. I'll get the spring edge here. Okay, so what I did was is I actually measured, I like to have registration marks in four corners. First of all, that's one thing I recommend. Registration marks in four corners. The center ones, if you have one here and one on the bottom, they're okay, but I find that four corners is the best because it's gonna keep you from rotating any piece of film like this, you know what I'm saying? And when you rotate like this and it's, it's rotated out, it's very difficult to get that, you know, that's no good. The idea is on a multicolor job is that we want each piece of film to be centered and positioned on each of the three screens, right? Because we have three colors in relatively the same position so that when we put this on press, each screen isn't gonna have to be in a massive different position. In other words, they wanna be very easily lined up to one another. So that's why we take these measurements here. All right, so for instance, on this one, we had five and a quarter inches from the frame edge to the T-bone of the crosshair here. And I actually use capital T's up on top and capital T's inverted on the bottom. And I like them a lot. They're really cool for uh, registration and, and you can use them like this to line up very easily. So I have five, five inches, one quarter inch, from the screen edge to there. If I measure the other side, I'm gonna have the same thing. Five and a quarter inches from the screen edge to this registration mark, the uh, you know horizontal or whatever, vertical. <laughs> okay, vertical line, right, of the T. Okay, so that's the measurement. Sometimes you may have to play around with this a little bit to kind of get the measurement even so it's easy for you to do. Okay, so basically at this point, I, would, I already know it's five and a quarter inches in from the frame edge, and that's gonna be the same measurement. Here, five and a quarter inches. When we do the next piece of film, we go five and a quarter and five and a quarter. Down here we measure it because we don't want this to be out of whack down here. So you actually have to measure down here and you have to measure up here. And when you have it in the approximate position, you would tape it down to the screen. Okay, so that's the deal. So that's the side measurement. You gotta do the same thing on the top. So anyway, five and a quarter, right? I would say five and one and quarter. That's the measurement I gotta use on this side. Okay, now I gotta get the top down measurement because we didn't really do that. Top down measurement, right? So here I can check, it's about four inches. Over here, four inches. We want it to be straight. You don't want it to be crooked. Be very careful not to rotate. You want this to be straight. So again, we're gonna use the same measurement, four inches from the top of this uh, horizontal now, right? <laughs> Is that the right word? For, for this mark, the top of the T, to the top of the T, is four inches. So I would write that on my little cheat sheet. Okay, so then we have it like that. So that's my little thing, and then basically that's how I would set up each screen. Then I'm gonna take the next screen and the next film positive and measure it up, kind of like this. And remember, I don't recommend using wood frames, really. I recommend metal screens, but this is my dummy screen that, that I don't use, and it's coated with emulsion to represent a fresh screen. So basically, you would be doing something like this with your film positives. Put it down. You can get side to side first. You can get one side. Five and a quarter is about, about so five and a quarter down here, you know, you have to take a couple measurements, you have to move this around a little bit. It's kind of hard for me to do without, you know, you know, when you're not making a video, it's, you can do whatever you need to do, but I'm getting in the way of the camera and stuff. So five and a quarter like that, 
five and a quarter, that's pretty good. And it doesn't have to be exact precise. Remember, we're only looking for as close as possible. Now I have to get it four inches down. So luckily this one was about four inches right where I landed it, and then I gotta check this. And that's pretty good. It's close enough, that's, that's good. So I would just tape it down. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I don't know if I kind of complicated that there. <laughs> but it's kind of just, we're just using the measurements. Okay, we just took two measurements and used them in three places. Okay, top is four inches. Four inches from the screen edge, the frame edge, to the top of the registration mark. Okay. And then the same thing for the sides. From the screen edge to the side of this T mark, this registration mark, okay? And it'll work with any, you know, any registration mark that has the crosshairs will work fine. And then again down here. All right, and even after you tape it, you might want to check it and just double check that it didn't move or anything like that when you taped it down. Now for, oh, by the way, make sure you have the film positive correct. I actually had it like this. <laughs> so don't do that. You got, make sure your film positive will read right when you set it up. Okay, guys, I'm sorry about that. I'm paying attention to video making. Sometimes I lose track of little details. So just make sure you always put your film positive down the appropriate way. We've discussed that before, so you know how to do that, right? All right, so now for this next technique, basically we're gonna use a little jig system and you don't really need anything special. We're gonna, we're just gonna take this and hopefully, hopefully I will tape it down in a good spot here first. Let, let me see. I wanna leave, I need some room. So right about there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape down my key printer. You can use the key printer, your black printer, because most of the time the black printer has most of the information, but because we have registration marks on here, it, you know, you really, I think you could actually use any of the, of the film positives, you know, and I'm just gonna take this down to the exposure unit. And I, I, I'm sorry, I'm close to the mic. I haven't done this in a long time, so don't laugh if I, uh, I haven't done this method in a long time. Don't laugh, okay? You're going through on my experiences with me. Who loves you, baby? Okay, so now, basically what I'm gonna do, and again, I'm gonna get in the way of the camera at some point, probably. But now, basically, I can just eyeball this. Okay, what I want to do right now is center the screen over the film positive. So make sure that, you know, the, the, the design is where you would want it burned on all of your screens, all three screens. And again, remember, I don't recommend using wood frames. You can get nice metal screens with, with uh, 18, 19 Newtons, catspitscreenprintsupply.com. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys, so um, this is just for demo. All right, so this is how I have it. I can actually see through. I don't need to turn the light on. I can see through here, but let's see. There, now you can see the film positive, right? Okay, so there's the film positive. All right, of course, you, you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't want to turn on this light when you're doing this. Okay, I just did that for the video, okay? You're gonna be doing this in the dark and you wouldn't turn that on because it would expose your emulsion. I just wanted you to see, I have the film positive under there. I think you can see it a little bit there. All right, so right now, basically, I'm okay. That's where I would want all of my stencils on my screens, okay? So I'm basically, I'm gonna take a piece of these two wood stirring sticks that you get a lot with emulsion, right? I'm gonna put one over here and I'm gonna put one over here. And then I'm going to tape them down. Make sure you tape them down good and that the screen can butt up against there nicely.
Okay, and try not to move your situation while you're doing this. There may be other ways to set this up, guys. Okay, you could set it up any way you want. But you can see what I'm doing here, right? Okay, you know that there are a lot of systems for, for, for doing this, and a lot of them actually use a jig or pin system that is present on your exposure table, and it's also set up on, or, or a, um, a template system is set up on a light box that you set the film positives up on. But for us ghetto poor guys, our garage boys, or people who work from home and may not have the space for systems like that, or you, maybe you don't have the money for it, you can do something like this where we basically just created a jig that we can butt the screen up. Now make sure that your stuff is taped down well. This is a demo video, so I may be overlooking things here, guys. Tape down. Good. Okay. And again, look, see a wood screen. You see that? That, that really sucks, and you don't want that. So a metal screen is going to butt in here really nice. Let's try a metal one. Here, I'll use this blank one here. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So now, now I can take the three screens for the three colors that we have, okay, and I can easily mark where they're going to go. And it's actually crooked a little bit. Make sure you're happy with where you want it. Now I would take the emulsion coated screen and, and and mark them, okay, and this is how I would do it. I'll do it with the wood screen so you can see, but I wanted to show you the metal screen. See it? It doesn't wobble, it's flat. This is what you want. That's really what you want. And look, it butts up really nice to these little makeshift ghetto jigs that I made, which are not really taped down good enough, so make sure yours are, okay? And basically what we would do is something like this. All right, sorry for the screen clattering but we're gonna go like this. All right, so, and I, you know, I apologize for the shooting situation here. I'm just making do, guys. I don't have a big studio or anything. So basically now that you have your little jig set up, you can leave the one film positive there because we're gonna mark, we're gonna make a little mark on the screen where the crosshairs are. Okay, now. The mark that you make on the screen is going to affect how that crosshair burns. Follow? So, the, you know, if you don't want to destroy the crosshair, you kind of got to figure out how to mark it next to the crosshair. Okay, so you would actually go in here and figure out how you want to put a little mark on the emulsion. It could be a dot. You could use a dot in the middle of this T or, you know, whatever you want to do. But basically, you're marking where these crosshairs are going to go on the screen. I recommend using a, a very unobtrusive, small mark. Okay, that you can use. And obviously, a better, a better table or a better situation to do this on where you're not leaning way back there. You might want to do it horizontally. Okay, so now what you've ended up and, and what we end up with, these are a little exaggerated so you can see them, but we have marks on the screen. So now we can mark all three screens like this, okay? And here up top, I don't know, can you see this one? <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm trying to, trying to get this in the camera, but I did a little smaller mark over here. Maybe a, a very fine point Sharpie is good too, you know? But do remember that these marks are going to most likely wash out and affect your crosshair or your registration mark. So if you mark on top of your crosshair or your registration mark, it's going to affect the way that that burns and it may not be as clean for you to use on press to line up. So be careful about that. That's the only thing I could say about that technique is the way you mark it can affect the burn on the crosshair. Okay, so now basically that's it. Now. Once all of them are marked, you can take the jig off, take all this stuff off, because you don't need it anymore, once you mark all three screens, and then you are gonna, you're going to use this system, what you've marked right now, right now, <laughs> just to line this up. You get it? And like I said, 
it doesn't have to be precise. This is not rocket science. We're not building a rocket ship here. We're screen printing a t-shirt or what I like to often call a rag. Okay, because <laughs> the old screen printer's joke is the, that all t-shirts end up as rags. Okay, in, in the end. So, um, just remember, it, it has to be close, as close as possible, so that you have an easier time on press. But it doesn't have to be 100% dead on. It does not. It just has to be very close and then with a rear clamp you'll have an easier time. So let's talk about that. Rear clamps and side clamps. Rear clamp presses, which is what I have, what you see in all my videos is what we call a rear clamp. The clamp is two knobs at the rear of your print station, okay? It's it's the print head. You know what a rear clamp is. That's that's the type I use. That's basically the type I sell and recommend because it has a lot of, uh, it's very dynamic in the screen size that you can put in and also where and how you can put the screen in the rear clamp. So it's very dynamic. And it has a lot more room for error when lining up the film positives. Side clamps, sometimes may be a little bit more restrictive side to side, okay? So, meaning that if you line up one of those film positives and it's off greatly from side to side on a side clamp, that may or may not be an issue depending on the press and how much room you have in the micro adjustment or the clamps themselves and the screen, the screen movement, okay? So, that's just something to consider that I think in my experience, I would say that I had to be a little bit more precise and more careful with my film positive placement on the screen when I'm making multiple screens, three color, three color job, three screens, three different colors, three different film positives, okay? When I do that on a side clamp press, I like to be a lot more precise in where I'm putting the film positive because most of the time I have a little bit less or much less movement than I would have in a rear clamp situation. Okay, so if you're on a rear clamp press like I am, um, you know, the measurements are very general and if you're within, uh, you know, an eighth of an inch or, or so, um, maybe even a quarter of an inch, as long as everything is, is straight and you don't have it rotated, twisted, you can probably get it registered on press. Well, I really hope that this video helped you a little bit. I'm not sure. Sometimes when I do these videos, uh, you know, as you know, guys, I don't script anything. and Everything comes from my personal experiences in my over 20, I don't even know, 25 years, 20, I don't know. I've been screen printing a long time and I've printed a lot of shirts and I've spent a lot of time behind the press. So I try to let a lot of the information that I give you guys flow off my brain and, and come to you uh, kind of live through the video. So uh, sometimes I forget things or I might, you know, it's, it's difficult. So I hope it helped you. If this video helped you, say this video helped you. Rate thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Please subscribe. I really appreciate that. Okay, and I think that's it for today, guys. If you like what you see, subscribe. We'll see you next time.